Welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I am going to talk about Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, an anime series from 2016 that is, I think, something that people mm, got mistaken about. They saw some things and it made some assumptions. This looks like the classic trapped in an MMO anime series, right? You got some characters in a fantasy world, and they're fighting goblins, and they wake up in this world, and they clearly don't belong here, um, but they're trapped here. This is not a trapped in an MMO uh, story. This is trapped in a fantasy world. This is trapped in D&D &D land. They are living in this environment that suddenly has all of these very different rules. And yes, you power up. Yes, you learn skills so that you do flashy things. But this is a classic thing of tabletop RPGs, not just video game RPGs. Video game RPGs pulled these things from tabletop games. And what I'm seeing in here makes this about tabletop gaming. And that's important because tabletop gaming lets you cover things that's harder to deal with in a video game. And no, I'm not anti-video game. But Grimgar is about this group of people who wake up in this fantasy world and suddenly they have to go out and kill goblins and get gold and get stuff and turn that into a guild and get money for it. And what's interesting is that the show treats that seriously. When they fight a goblin, quite importantly, the goblin doesn't want to die. And there's this significant sequence in this episode where they're trying to fight a goblin. I'm going to find it here. I think it's, it might be in the, in the, the next episode. Um, they're fighting a goblin, and the goblin refuses to die. It is holding on to its life. It just refuses to die and fights back over and over again. And the characters realize, and I don't think this is a spoiler, just as they don't want to die, neither does the goblin. The goblin is just as, as fierce about itself as they are. So suddenly this is not just about characters running around trying to solve a mystery. It's about characters surviving. And also, again, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that people die in this show. I'm not saying it's, you know, every main character dies. But I'm saying, you know, folks go out on quests and they don't all come back every time. And that is set in this world where, again, it's not a video game. It's not just this constructed world. It is a place. These people are living this life. They, they, they exist here. So the show has a reality, a weight to it that you do not get in many other anime series, period which is incredibly refreshing and allows the, the show to go in directions that you wouldn't otherwise. I will probably post a separate video um, that goes into spoilers about some of the later plot elements because I think it's very important to understanding this show. Uh, there is some depth to Grimgar. And that's helped by the artwork. They spend an amazing amount of time on this beautiful, very grounded artwork. One of the other reasons I think this isn't set in a video game is because the architecture I'll go back to some of this architecture of the town um, the town is very much bits of pieces catty cornered together it feels like it's grown over time and yes video games try to do that and they do an excellent job of it but this feels more like a physical place that's been here for a long time and that um, has grown and has history behind it. And again, I think it's really important to understanding Grimgar. This is a show about life and death. 
and how we deal with that. Um, and I don't mean that there's life and death every second of every day, but they are living in this world where they're killing things. So death is a possibility at any given time. Um, what's also interesting is that the characters have no memory of where they came from. But it's clear from, well, it's heavily implied that they are Japanese teenagers, and they all have, most of them have Japanese names. They remember that at least. And you get hints of what their personalities would have been like. You know, they're all teenagers, roughly. Um, you know, mid to late teenagers, it seems. And so you get a sense of who they, they would have been in their original life. And you get to contrast what your life is like versus their life. And yes, it's exciting, but it's also terrifying. And it's also hard one of the wonderful things about this show is how everything's expensive. Like, they have to work to survive, to afford food, to afford lodging. They have to go out and fight things and fight a lot of things. And not just fight them, but, like, you know, defeat them. Get stuff to show that they are defeated. Like, it's not just running around and, and attacking things. Um... No, mere combat is not enough. This is not a show where I expected it to have this, this weight, this seriousness to the concept. Um, there's goofiness, there's some comedy, uh, particularly these scenes you're seeing here, or you're seeing over here with one of the characters, kind of mentors in the fantasy world. Uh, so there, there's some wonderful light moments. There's also some, like right there, there's some sort of camera fan service. So there are a few moments where you see, you know, character, you know, sometimes the girls are walking, you know, from the bath to somewhere else and they got a towel wrapped around them and it's a, you know, like a short, you know, skirt, if you will. Uh, you know, it goes down very low. Um, but n refreshingly, that is pretty much all the fan service in the show that I can think of. There are one or two characters throughout the sh um, side characters in the show that have revealing outfits like that one you saw. But pretty much all and all of the girls in the main series wear practical outfits, um, you know, sometimes showing skin here and there, but it's not, you know, triangle cut out below my breasts and things like that. It's like, n no. Um, they wear reasonable outfits, but just sometimes some, you know, that's a fairly short skirt. You know, whatever. Um, and also, I will give them this, there are um, a fair number of shots of shirtless, muscled guys, right? So they give as good as they take in terms of male and female fan service. Um, uh, so at least they're not being, you know, completely misogynist one side, which I guess is better than nothing. Um, so fortunately, again, it, it's reasonable on, on that. There is one point I want to make about the characters here. It is about these characters arriving in this world and kind of coming to grips with their place in this world and what it's like to have to work for a living. There is one character, and you see him right there, this red-haired young man who is the a-hole. Right? He is the rogue. He doesn't want to do what anyone else wants him to do. Very much chaotic evil in the D&D &D, you know, alignment uh, universe. And he can be very frustrating to watch. There were one or two times where I was just like, I don't, I'm tired of this. I really wish this character would just shut up or they just, they, you know, he can fall off a cliff right now. Fortunately, it doesn't go on for very long. And um, again, I'm not going to say where that goes story-wise, but it did not ruin the anime for me long-term, right? Like it, 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 you may find yourself frustrated with the character, but just work through it a little bit, and, you know, I don't think you'll be as frustrated with the character throughout the entire show. It is uh, a single core, uh, single season anime series. I don't believe there are any plans for season two so far. I would love to see a second season, because I think there is much more that can be done with these characters. That said, there is a wonderful... 
I shouldn't say wonderful. There is a satisfying sense of progression in this storyline. It does not, you know, um, I felt that the ending, no spoilers, was an effective point to stop this. Again, it's a world with lots of these different characters doing things. That's not a problem. You can you can definitely tell more story here. Um, so that's one of those things where it's like, I, I think this season is a good amount. Love to see more. Please do more. Please do more. Uh, but I don't think you'll you'll feel frustrated that there's only one season, right? It also helps that it looks the way it does. The backgrounds have that not just watercolor sense to it, but this um, this just outright beauty to the show. It is a um, you know it is set in this fantasy world that feels like a fantasy world. It feels slightly unreal. It feels like there's magic in the air, and it's something that anime often doesn't get across too well. Anime's a little too abstract, or it's a little too um, for lack of a better word, cartoony at times, but this feels like a D and D world, which is lovely to see, and it's it can be just lovely, just outright beautiful, much of the time. I will say the animation has its issues. I was watching, and, I, and these are actually copies of or this is a copy of the um, uh, the video as of the original release, so there are probably. Animation mistakes you'll see here that are fixed in the official DVD Blu-ray release, which is good because there are, I would say, once an episode there is a noticeable but very brief animation mistake. You know, somebody will just have their eyes in the wrong place, I mean, not completely the wrong place, obviously, but you know, the eyes are considerably closer in than normal, or. Um, you know, the hair is drawn differently or you know the height is off stuff like that that's that happens like once an episode not enough to pull you out not enough to affect your enjoyment of the show but noticeable so be prepared for that and i think you won't have any problem really with the show because there's there is weight to the show and the characters are there so hope this is helpful